We try to track student learning at the daily level, at the weekly level, at the unit level, all the while pushing ourselves toward the end of the year. We have to have pretty constant data on where the kids are so that we're using class time most effectively. I want to make sure that I'm extremely purposeful with the time, that I know when can I release a majority of the students to do something and know that they can do that. And during that time, who are the three kids in the room that need me to stop by and give them a quick reminder and watch and make sure that they can do that skill. So I think just collecting and keeping track of that data helps you to most effectively use the limited time that you have as opposed to not collecting data and just putting material before them and just walking around and hoping I'm going to stumble upon a student that I could help. You definitely want to have data that's affecting the whole group, but within that you're definitely trying to reach individual students because that's who makes up the group. I can go through during that first 10 minutes and say, okay, these are my five students in the room right now who need that information recalled. Then when I'm actually going through that, both in the do now and in the lesson, I know I could call on anyone in the room, but I'm going to be very intentional call on these five so that I've heard from these five and they've heard back from me and I already know the other 15 have got it because I saw that. What students really remember the importance of the word square and how square yards are different than just yards. Okay, and by our count, about six of us during this lesson need to be reminded of the importance of square. What's Henry's error that he's not really fully comprehending the significance of that word square? Donnell? Square yards is two yards, so you got to do it twice. Yeah, so this one step is supposed to be used twice. Can someone tell me if I'm trying to correct his thinking, then how do I write six square yards in a way that shows me I'm doing this two times? How should I have that written, please? Uh, Demetrius. Absolutely correct. So we take this two times, cancel here. Raise your hand if you can tell me six square yards is truly equal to what number? Because it is not equal to 18 square feet. What is it truly equal to? Adrian? 54 feet. And now Adrian, remember that we have feet times feet. And what do we call feet times feet? Feet squared. That would be called feet squared is absolutely correct. The orange sign has been posted since the very beginning of the year, before even day one, it's posted. And the goals that are set there are based on how this specific cohort did while they were in eighth grade. And I also try to make sure that I have goals that are gonna hit students at all levels. So I have a goal that 20 students would be in the top 10% of the state. That obviously is only gonna apply mainly to the honor students, and that really gets them going. I have a goal that 90% of all students would be proficient. So that's kind of a catch-all goal. Really, we all need to buy into this idea, and we all need to hold each other accountable during class. And then we have some uh, goals that are going to hit more at the bottom for some of those students that may not reach it to proficiency. Um, I do have a goal that no student would be at the lowest level, which is below basic, which many of the students are coming to me. For example, Adrian has been below basic third through eighth grade. They want to buy into what you're doing. And so I can use data to sell him. Adrian, you really are improving. You really are making it toward this mark. And if we keep doing these things in class, you really will get there. So I like to use the data as a sales pitch. And when I'm in class recognizing success in class, I try to make success attainable for students. So for a student that's been failing, they're maybe not going to be successful in the way of having a top score every time. But I can recognize him for showing the most growth. I can recognize him for hitting his personal best from the entire school year. So I think it's really important for students like Adrian that we're defining success in terms that are legitimately successful, but there are so many access points that students at various skill levels can find an access point where they're beginning to feel successful in the classroom. It kind of relates to me of how he teaches me because it makes me feel that I can do anything and that I won't fail it. Before I started learning math, it was a little bit challenging because I would just kind of slack around when I was younger. And now that I understand it, I don't even have to worry about it now. On the first test in my class, he failed. He was in the bottom five 
scores uh, for the whole grade, and this last test he had a 96. Okay, these are correct. These are correct. Now, you have your cubic inches, but you need your per minute. So we need a convert of seconds to minutes. How are we going to do that? Uh, 60, 60, 60, 40 minutes. Yeah. Well, I try to always go back and view data through that lens and view data through the lens of growth towards something. Uh, we're not a finished product in August, and even with 11 class periods before the EOC, we're not a finished product. We're moving eagerly, trying to use our time effectively toward that in product. So knowing which skills need what as far as review versus reteach, where were the exact misconceptions, what are the nuances of this problem. I think storing that information throughout the year and having that all at my fingertips allows me to really use these days of review extremely effectively.